We all have different cravings when it comes to food, and we often depend on processed food to satisfy our cravings. What if someday in the future, you could have your food delivered to you by drones? If that caught your attention, stick around till the end of the video to know how you could use a 3D printer to print food. Let's dive in. Number 7. Ice Cream Factory As kids, we all loved ice cream, and we still do today. But have you wondered how your ice cream is made? Well, most ice cream that you have today is completely made by machines. It all starts with the milk arriving at the ice cream plant in refrigerated tanker trucks from local dairy farms. The milk is then pumped into storage silos and the pipes transfer the milk in a pre-measured amount to stainless steel blenders. Eggs, sugar, and other additives are blended with milk for about six to eight minutes. The blended texture is then pasteurized at approximately 83 degrees Celsius or 182 degrees Fahrenheit. The hot mixture is then forced through a small opening into a homogenizer, which breaks down fat particles and prevents them from separating from the rest of the mixture. The mixture is then piped back to the pasteurizer with cold water flowing through one side of the plate as a mixture passes on the opposite side. The ice cream is then pumped into stainless steel containers, and this is where the flavoring is added into it and blended thoroughly. Now the mixture is frozen and pumped into continuous freezers using liquid ammonia as a freezing agent. The mixture then leaves the freezer with the consistency of a soft-serve ice cream. Manufacturers then add more flavoring and nuts to make it as delicious as possible, and then the finished product is sealed and transported. That's the ice cream you get from the store. Number 6. Donuts We all unanimously love our donuts. Because of this fact, donuts need to be made in huge numbers, and it might not be economical for companies to just get it done with human labor. That's where automation comes into the picture. It all starts with mixing the ingredients and then getting the dough right. Firstly, water and yeast is added to the donut mix, and this dough is poured into a hopper. The hopper then feeds the dough into an extruder, which is a device that forms your favorite donut-shaped rings. These donuts are then taken to a proof box where the donuts are surrounded with heat and humidity. The proof box is a tall glass case that has a donut conveyor belt. This conveyor belt is responsible for taking the donut tray slowly up and down in a zigzag motion all the way through the proof box. This process is responsible for the donut's final shape. These donuts are then fried in vegetable oil on a conveyor belt. And finally, these donuts go to the glazing and cooling section. This is where the donuts are customized to your liking. If you want chocolate on it, you can have it. Number 5. Hot Dogs Hot dogs are among the classic American street foods, and they are loved by so many all over the world. Hot dogs are processed meat products that are made by mixing chopped meat with various ingredients. The meat is stuffed in a casing and is sometimes removed from the casing right before the final package. But how exactly is it made in the factories? Well, it all starts with the processing of meat. The meat is cut into small pieces and placed in a stainless steel mixing container. The container is equipped with high-speed choppers, which can reduce the size of the meat even further. The raw materials include curing ingredients, flavors, and ice chips, along with the meat, and it is blended until it becomes a fine batter. After quality checks, this batter is pumped into an automatic stuffer or linker machine, and the batter is poured into a tube-shaped cellulose casing. The hot dogs are pre-cooked in a large smokehouse under controlled conditions. This is also a place where the manufacturer has the ability to add different flavors to the hot dog using a variety of smokes. Once the cooking is done, the hot dogs are moved via a conveyor to an automatic peeler and showered with water to equalize their internal temperature. These hot dogs are then packed for you to consume. Number four, cheese production. There are different varieties of cheese and the exact variety determines the ingredients the type of processing, and characteristic of the cheese. Cheese is made using pasteurized or raw milk. Milk can come from a cow, goat, sheep, 
or a mix of different types of milk. The type of coagulant used will depend on the type of cheese. The manufacturing process starts with standardizing the milk to optimize the protein to fat ratio to make good quality cheese with a high yield. The milk is then pasteurized or mildly heated to reduce the number of spoilage causing organisms and improve the environment for starter cultures to grow. Raw milk cheeses must be aged at least 60 days to reduce the possibility of exposure to disease causing organisms. Milk is then cooled after pasteurization to bring it to the temperature required for the starter bacteria to grow. The starter bacteria is then added to the milk. After this step, bacteria is allowed to grow. That's when the pH is lowered and the flavor of the cheese is developed. Then an enzyme called rennet acts on milk proteins to form curd. After rennet is added, the curd is not distributed for approximately 30 minutes. The curd is then allowed to ferment and it is then cut into small pieces and heated to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The heating step separates the whey from the curd and the curd forms a mat. The curd mats are cut into smaller pieces and are seasoned with salt. These smaller pieces are placed in cheese hoops and pressed into blocks to form cheese. After the aging process, the cheese can be packed and sold. That's how you get your cheese from the stores. Number 3. Canned Tuna Tuna may be one of the favorite foods for seafood lovers like yourself. You might be wondering how your favorite seafood ended up in a can. Well, that's all the work of some advanced automated factory. Tunas are moved from the freezer to large thawing tanks. Once completely thawed, they are prepared for initial cleaning. The tuna is then loaded onto metal racks, and this is where the tuna is transferred to large steam pressure cooking chambers called retorts. The tuna is then baked for a prescribed time at a prescribed temperature depending upon the size of the fish. The steam baking is responsible for removing excess oils and will prepare tuna for easy removal of skin and bones after baking. The tuna is then moved to a temperature controlled room for cooling. Once it is cooled, it is sent to cleaning tables where the edible meat is separated from the skin and the bones. The cleaned meat is then moved to the canning process and this is where the cans are automatically filled with tuna and are moved in a single line from the filling machine to the vacuum sealer. The tuna is then seasoned with salt, vegetable broth, water or oil and lids are automatically clenched onto the top of the can before entering the vacuum sealer. Later, the lid is sealed properly, so next time when you have your tuna, you have to appreciate what goes on behind the scenes. Number 2. Drone Delivery Imagine, you're looking up at the sky and you just see drones flying over your head to deliver food. Maybe that could be the future of food delivery. The COVID pandemic accelerated the growth of ghost kitchens. The next step for ghost kitchens would be to have drones for delivery. We still have a long way to go for it to be practical, because if there are so many drones out in the air, it's going to create a lot of problems. Drone deliveries in theory might reduce traffic and air pollution and might potentially be an environmentally friendly alternative to human delivery systems. But the issue with drone delivery is the fact that the packages don't have a safe landing area. Then there is a question of security. The drone will be flying autonomously, which means it will be controlled by a computer system that needs to be impervious to hackers to prevent theft. These drones might act as a threat to property, people, and other aircrafts if a malfunctioning drone falls from the sky either when they run out of battery or become controlled by a hacker. But some form of drone delivery will be big in the near future. Number 1. 3D Food Printer When 3D printers were first around, nobody would have thought that it could someday in the future be used for printing food. But today we have dozens of food printers available in the market, all thanks to rapid growth and technology and public interest. 3D food printing technology is still at its infancy, 
and it still has a long way to go for it to be used on a massive scale. Extrusion is by far the most common process for 3D printing food. Most of the 3D printed food works very similar to printing filament with regular fusion deposition modeling where viscous material is deposited onto the surface to create the final object. There is a growing market for both professional and prosumer fusion deposition modeling, like food printing machines. Right now, food 3D printers are used for building intricate shapes and designs and not used for cooking the food. So after printing the food, these need to be cooked in an external oven or grill. Not many people know about food technology as a real career choice that you could choose. You can make it big in this domain, especially if you find any of these factories and their technology interesting. Food has become much more than just survival, and that's positive news for all foodies out there.